Hey guys, this is Robert Daly with the Daily Woodworks YouTube channel. And today I'm going to do a feature overview of the Makita LTX or LXT 18 volt times 2 36 volt brushless cordless track saw. I've done an unboxing video, I've done a first use video, and now I'm just going to dive into all the features, all the nooks and crannies, how to do a blade change, how to adjust the bevel, what every knob and doodad on this saw is. So the first thing we're going to do is start with the batteries. It takes two 18 volt batteries. There's one on the top, plugs in right here. And then there's one on the bottom and it goes in. They slide in and out pretty easy. Nice snug fit, but easy to get in and out. And that leads us to the power gauge. There's a power gauge button right here. You can see that I have fully charged batteries on both ends. Looking at this part of the saw, you can also see that there is a dial speed indicator. And I'm not gonna plunge it into anything, but you can just listen to the sound it makes. And now let's crank it up. Now most of the time I'm going to leave that dialed up to 5. I'm not sure the exact use that I would want to turn down the speed for. But there you have it. Okay, so now I'm going to take the batteries out because we are going to be touching everything on this. Okay, so batteries out. It's safe. On this side of the saw you have these two knobs. These two knobs adjust the tension on your track. You see these green tabs right here the more you tighten that in the more those move in and tighten it up on the track so you can adjust any slop out this guy right here that comes in and out is to lock it into the groove on your track let me grab a track real quick and I'll show you that if you look at the edge of this track unlike the fez tool track it's got this extra little lip right here it's got this extra little lip right here, and that is an anti-tip feature. So if you're using the saw on the track, it can easily tip off. When you engage the anti-tip feature, it doesn't lock the saw to the track, but it does keep it locked on a little bit better. You can still put it on like so, slide the track, but especially if you're making a bevel cut, it's gonna pull the track with it. So if you clamp your track down, all right, so I went ahead and tilted the saw over 45 degrees just to show you what different things do. These two knobs are for an auxiliary fence that you put into these slots here if you wanted to use this saw to make rips without a track. So when you're using it with a the track, they are pretty much not used. These two knobs adjust your tension. This is your anti-tip feature. And then you can see your spring. That's what controls the plunge mechanism. We have our 45, up to 40, I think 48 degrees. Stop, this little guy flips, and that's what stops it at 45 or 48. It can do a negative one degree bevel. When you push that guy in, it can come down to negative one, but then it pops back out. So you push it in, it goes to negative one, and then it will automatically re-zero to uh, zero degree bevel. That is pretty cool. So push it in, has a spring. I need to come down a little bit more. Push it in, come down to negative one degree up. Um, that's useful if you need to put like a little back bevel on something. Um, you're having trouble getting stuff to close out. Maybe a uh, miter or a bevel isn't lining up just right, so you could have that little extra to line it up. We actually do that in trim carpentry a lot. Put a little back bevel on things when you're buttoning two cabinets up together. That way you get a seamless finish and the back of the box isn't interfering. Okay, to adjust the depth, it's very simple. A very simple twist knob. Goes down to 50 millimeters and then up to zero millimeters. When you push the button, that engages. 
and it's a very simple stop mechanism basically as you plunge it down so I just can't go any further and about 25 is where I find I want to set it for that one thing that I'll say I wish this had that the Fez tool has and this one doesn't is uh, a second gauge that includes the width of your track so you can take that into account or basically ignore the width of your track when you're making a cut I would love for it to have a second scale so whenever I was cutting three quarter inch plywood I could just set it at 18 millimeter it automatically account for the thickness of my track and go from there you can calibrate your adjustments a little bit I'm not finding I need to I'm not gonna trust I'm gonna trust the hard stops in from the factory right there alright so we pretty much oh there are two there are two springs to make this negative one degree so you gotta push that in and push that in and when you push both in it goes to negative one degree so you'll notice there's two pins right here both are spring loaded so that's easy okay when you're looking at the front of the saw there's a few things to note um, we just talked about this bevel lock but you're probably wondering what this green guy is this green guy as you see can be pivoted and then puts a hole right there what happens is when you are ready to change the blade that actually acts as a stop to hold the blade down okay on the front you have your bevel gauge there are a couple of stops right here so let's unlock that so if you need to do a compound 45 degree cut you can you twist that right there it's a positive click and it stopped at 22 and a half degrees that adds up to be 45 degrees again very nice feature then you clip it back and you can go back to 45 to go to 48 degrees you flip this up and it just flips the stop out of the way and it goes to 48 degrees I'll leave that in place and I'm gonna leave that there then nice twist knobs that you just tighten up it does feel like if you really bore down on these knobs you could snap them but it doesn't require a lot of brute force or the disc part does pivot around not quite 360 degrees but pretty close um, I do recommend using a bag or a uh, vacuum on this because man the dust all comes out of this but it comes out with a lot of force and so that's one good thing is the bag will be effective on this guy other than that you have a little hole for the blade chains right here and this side isn't all that quote unquote impressive on the bottom we looked at that before you have your pivot points adjustment screws so you can calibrate the saw and then we can see inside of it on the top you have a few things okay this button right here is a uh, scoring feature so right now I have my depth set at 25 millimeters so when I plunge the saw you can see that it comes down 25 millimeters now when I engage this it creates a secondary stop and it only comes down that far that allows you to do a scoring cut on your very expensive uh, finish grade plywood and take a scoring pass and then do your finish pass secondly okay how this unlocks is when you push this button that pin gets pulled in and then you plunge. When you're ready to take your full depth, you just with your thumb pull that out, red line showing, pull it, plunge all the way down, and then it hits. And then when you plunge, just the saw itself contacts your stop. And then this lever right here is what locks the arbor to take the blade out so now we're gonna take out the blade and then we're gonna take a little look inside this guy alright so I'm gonna take out the blade 
the first thing, and obviously I'm kind of doing this upside down and backwards because I am doing it for example purposes. But I'm going to stand that up right there just to get me a little bit of height. These are some table legs, or some uh, end table legs that I was making. So we're going to plunge it. We're going to push the button to release the lock, plunge it down, take our hand, rotate this blue guy, rotate the blue guy right here, and then a lock in place. Let me get a close up of that. You can see it's now locked in place right there, and that locks the arbor so that you can access the nut. The Allen key stores right here out of the way so you don't have to worry about losing that. We're going to take that out and we're going to adjust it now. Two degrees. Okay, so that's done. Now, there's a little lever right here. That is the lock to remove the blade. So I'm going to push it. It's locked in place. Loosen that up. And we're going to take a look at the blade. Washer. Then you've got your arbor. So we're going to take the blade and carefully pull it out. This is a six and a half inch um, finishing blade. That's a Makita brand 50, uh, 56 tooth. Um, I am very happy with this blade and I can absolutely say you can go ahead and order those Makita blades uh, instead of going to your Diablo or other brands because this guy cuts beautifully. So this is a great piece of engineering, great blade, six and a half inch. 165 millimeters it's perfect so since I have the blade out and unplugged I am gonna take off this dust straw because I kind of want to see what's inside there all right for the record I am using a rigid tool a DeWalt bit holder and a Milwaukee bit to disassemble a Makita tool I think I'm pretty well represented here so these are just Phillips heads. I've got my power on the lowest setting. Pull that out. I got all the guys out. Whoopsie. Okay, so this is what we have inside of the saw. That's pretty cool, huh? So I guess if you wanted to change the blade this way, you could. Looks like there's some machinist gunk in there still. Oh, that just came undone. Let me plunge that back down. So, I mean, that looks pretty cool. I'm not going to disassemble it any more than that because I'm not that AVE guy. Um, I'm not skookum enough to rip this thing all the way apart and put it back together. But I did want to take that out and just see what it looked like. So that is the full overview of the Makita track saw. It's model number XPS01PTJ is the model number very much have liked the very little interaction I have with this saw already. Um, great addition. I believe it was well worth the investment. Um, I don't know how it compares to the Festool track saw. I have used the Festool track saw a couple of times and a friend of mine has one. Um, I think there are going to be some subtle differences and just for the record, I'm not against owning or spending lots of money on Festool products. This is a $650 standard. I love it. It's great. However, 
I decided to go with this for the track saw because I believed that the cordless would give me a better value overall. Um, but I do want to actually put it side by side with the Fez tool, um, see how it feels. Overall, this feels like a quality tool. Um, I don't believe there's anything lacking on this feature-wise. There might just be some convenience issues. And this will run on a Fez tool track. So thanks for watching this full video, this overview of the Makita track, cordless track saw. Um, I hope you found this video useful and helpful to you if you are in the market to buy a track saw. I have a full series in the works that goes from unboxing, first cut, and this is the third video of an overview of all the features and settings on this particular model. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and we will see you next time. Before I go, I figured I'd do one quick overview of the case it comes in. Charger here. Uh, saw sits in here. If you're going to store it in here, I would say just leave the batteries in it because there's not really room to put them. And then in the case, it's got this little plastic insert that looks like you can put a few extra blades. So if you want a def dedicated uh, ripping blade, dedicated finish blade, you have them in there to go. Other than that, say a piece of molded plastic. This all just sets in here. Pretty much comes to the top of the box. So when you close the box, it's pretty well held in place. Um, there is room for some accessories right there if you want them. Uh, my square does fit into the box just just barely the square just fits into the box so that is a nice little thing so you can keep that with you and then if there were any other track saw attachments that you wanted with you they could fit in here so theoretically you could fit a couple more batteries and a small charger to take with you places but with this already right there and that being the charger with my two extra batteries in it you don't really need that